Hey there, welcome back. Thanks for popping in. I just wanted to take um, an opportunity to make a quick video about cuts. I know that so far in a lot of the slow and steady walkthroughs um, that I've done of the tunes, I will mention that I take out all ornamentation um, for the walkthrough except some cuts, but I never really took the time to explain what a cut was or how I used it. So I'm just gonna do a quick little video to kind of discuss and describe that just so you can have that bit of information. Maybe you already know how to do cuts, fantastic. But if it's not something that you've really worked into your playing yet, maybe you'll find this resource helpful. So for me, I use cuts in two different ways. I use cuts to separate a double note within a tune. So instead of um, tonguing two notes that are the same side by side, I'll use a cut to separate them. The second way I use a cut is to play it at the very start of a note. I cut just that one particular note. It adds um, kind of a punch to it. It kind of really pronounces it um, and helps it to stand out a bit and kind of keep the tune rolling along. Um, so for a double note cut, we'll start there. Um, a double note cut is where we're gonna separate two of the same notes that are side by side by quickly snapping one of our fingers off the whistle. Um, so it lets a blip of air come out through that hole, which breaks the sound a little bit. Um, and that break creates the separation between the two notes that are the same. So if I'm playing an F and I have two Fs side by side in a tune, I'm going to cut them. And um, before I demonstrate, the notes that are played with my right hand, F, E, and D, I always cut with my G finger, which is the third finger down on my left hand. Um, so double, double O, D, always G cut, E, G cut, F, G cut. Um, that's how I do it. It's much easier and it goes quickly um, than trying to like cut with the same fingers down here. Um, so for example, if I'm playing an F and I have two side by side, I'm gonna cut them. So you can hear the separation. I'm separating by cutting. And that little break that you hear, that's just a little bit of the air escaping out when I snap my G finger. Now what you don't wanna do on the cut is lift your finger too far off the whistle or for too long of a period of time. Because the goal is to just kind of get a break in the sound in between the two notes so they're the same. You don't wanna add in a new and sustained sound that doesn't belong there. So what you don't wanna do, you don't wanna do this. So see, I'm going too slow. I'm lifting my finger up, that becomes a new sound and I'm putting it back down. So it actually adds additional time and an additional note um, within the tune that doesn't belong there. So what a good practice to do is to kind of just do drills. Um, so since these three fingers are cut with the G finger, you can just go up and down and cut and just get your finger used to that quick motion of up and down, snap it right back. Just only let a little tiny bit of air escape and then you're putting it right back on. Um, so keep your finger, the finger you're cutting with, as close to the whistle as you can. Um, so you can kind of practice by just going up and down these three notes. So you can just kind of do that to build in that kind of muscle memory and kind of get your finger used to doing the snap. Um, so that's a good exercise to practice to get used to it. Now the notes that the left hand plays, you've got B, A, and G. So if I have a G note, two side by side in a tune and I need to cut the G, I can either use the G finger to cut or I can use the B finger to cut. Um, they offer a tiny bit of a different sound in between the two. Um, so it's really just preference what your hand can get used to. I don't know, I kind of go back and forth. I, to my ears, I can hear the difference when I cut with a B um, for the G over just cutting with the G finger, but honestly, it's whatever you find easier and whatever you like. I'll show you both now. So this is cutting G with the G finger. And then this is G cut with the B finger.
So you can hear it almost chirps a little bit more when you cut with the B. It kind of adds a cool additional sound into the playing and into the tune. So I kind of like to use it sometimes. Um, so A, you can cut, Just I just cut with the A finger. Um, some people I have seen will cut A with the B finger. It's just really um, personal preference. For me, the way I learned was to cut A with the um, A finger. You can try cutting it with B. Um, not in action I'm used to doing. So I can try to demonstrate, but if it doesn't come out well, don't hold it against me because it's not typically the way I play it. So this is A cut with the A finger. All right, so that's A, cut with A. I'll try and do it with the B, we'll see. Let's see how it goes. So it's kind of there. Um, it does add that little bit of chirp like it did on the G, which is kind of pretty. So if you can get used to that action and you like that sound by all means, you can play it that way or just cut with the A finger. Um, either way, no matter which route you go, practice those cuts. You know, the little exercise I just showed you for down here, you can run the same exercise up top. And then once you get comfortable, go right up and down the scale and do it all at the same time. Um, you really just want to create that snap motion. And so on B, you're literally just cutting B with B since that's the last one. And the same goes for the upper octave. Um, high D, I would cut with my G finger. Um, if I had to, I typically cut with the G. Um, that's what I do. Um, and then all the other notes you would cut similarly as you do in the lower octave. So that is how I use a cut for double notes. Again, you may approach it differently, totally fine. There's lots of ways of doing things really ultimately is that you just want to achieve that sound of causing the break in between two notes, not having a sustained sound in between two of the same notes. That's the most important thing. Um, the other way I use cuts is to pronounce a note right at the beginning. Um, so for instance, in this tune sleeve Russell, um, I'm gonna play just the first couple measures. There's a double note cut on the A, which you'll hear. And I also do um, a cut at the beginning of a couple notes in the upper octave to kind of add a punch to them. Um, so let me play you, I'll play it slowly, these first couple measures. So hopefully you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so first measure, there's a double note, which is an A. I'm cutting that using a normal cut. Now, in the second measure, I'm cutting, I'm snapping right at the beginning of the note. Kind of has this sound. So you're cutting right at the beginning of playing the note. So here. So you can hear that little bit of punch on my high A and my high G. And that's because right at the beginning of playing that note, I'm cutting it. It takes some practice, but it's worth it because you really want that um, pronounced sound sometimes. I do, I tend to do it a lot on my B, um, and in that, I'm doing it on the high A. And the high G. Oh, I'm going into the third octave there. Oh my gosh, sorry. This whistle doesn't take much air, so I tend to overblow sometimes when I play this one. So you can hear that little chirp right at the beginning of the note. I'm cutting it right when I first start playing it. Um, and it just helps to add a little bit more of a pronounced sound. It's a good way to kind of bring out some notes. Um, and sometimes almost give them a different sound, especially in the upper octave when things can get kind of shrill, um, to kind of give something a nice cut right at the beginning. It kind of just blends it into the rest of the music a little nicer. I don't know, to me it makes it sound a bit more pleasant to the ear. Um, so that's the two ways that I use cuts. 
Um, I hope that all of that made sense. Um, and then you can also do a drill similarly um, to get those cuts right at the beginning of the note by just practicing. Got a little squeaky there, sorry. That was just in the upper register. You can do it in the lower register too. But just kind of create an exercise for yourself to kind of practice that punch. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I can see I've already gone 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. So if you made it this far, that's fantastic. Thank you for watching. Um, if not, that's cool too. Um, if you have any questions or if any of that didn't make sense or something needs a further explanation, leave a comment down below and ask your question and I'll do my best um, to kind of come back on and describe it in a different way. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening and thanks for seeing this one through. Talk to you later.